hearts with praise. We come to give God all the glory and honor to do his name. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We don't take it for granted that we're here, but we come to give God all the glory and honor. Some of us could have been dead and gone, but God allowed us to see another day. And I come to give him thanksgiving. I come to give him praise. We thank God for all of you coming out tonight. We welcome you to Victory's Praise. Our pastors, Pastor Will Nichols and our first lady, Dr. Grace Nichols. Let's give them a great big hand. We certainly thank God for them. Amen. We're going to go ahead and open up our last and final growth group for this uh, session. We're going to ask our minister chambers to come and lead us in prayer. And following our prayer, we'll have our scripture by Minister David Ray. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Saints of God, let's put on the whole armor of God tonight. Let's put on the whole armor tonight. Hallelujah. For God has brought us thus far through these growth group and it's truly been a blessing. So let us put on that whole armor and bless the Lord on tonight. Let's give him some glory in the house tonight. For he is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor on tonight. And we just want to say bless your name, Jesus. Our Father and our God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come before you tonight, God, just to tell you, thank you. Just to tell you, God, how much we appreciate you. God, we love you. We adore you. We magnify you, oh God. For you are magnificent, oh God. And we just want to say thank you on tonight, oh God. We want to thank you, God, because you kept us, oh God, throughout these weeks, oh God. You've opened up our understanding, God. You've given us illumination, oh God. You've given us fellowship, one one with the other, oh God. You've given us love one for the other, oh God. And we just want to say thank you on tonight, oh God. We just want to glorify you tonight, for truly you are worthy on tonight. Father, we ask that you will bless our pastor. Bless our first lady on tonight, oh God. Continue, God, to give them revelation, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Continue, God, to give them guidance, oh Lord, as you, they lead your people on tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we just thank you for them tonight, God. We pray, God, that you would anoint them, O oh God. Anoint them afresh for your glory, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, as they continue to be one, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you said in your word that for this reason shall a man leave mother and father and cleave to his wife. They shall no longer be twins, but they shall be one. We thank you, God, for the oneness of our pastor and our first lady on tonight, God. Continue to mount them up with wings of eagle, O oh God. Continue to give them hind feet, O oh God, that they will leap over walls and run through troops, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we decree it and we declare it, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The reading of the word is coming from Psalms 23, and it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Come on, continue to clap those hands as you take your seats. Amen. We're going to have our announcements at this time. I'll draw your attention to our video screens. The volunteer ministry here at Victorious Praise spotlights our new and exciting growth groups. The Bible tells us to walk in the spirit, but it didn't tell us to walk alone. When you join a growth group at BPF, you're getting three things. First, a connection with other like-minded believers. Second, you're going to get an opportunity to think about, talk about the word of God. And then finally, you get to grow spiritually so that you're ready to face life's challenges. 
Join a BPF growth group today. We meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Ready, set, grow. The volunteer ministry needs your help. So if you want to have Christ-centered relationships and experience growth in God's word, then we ask that you sign up and join our growth groups. You can do so by going online to victoriouspraise.org and sign up there. We look forward to the fellowship and to serving with you. I'm always telling people why I love coming to Hope Rains. It's grooming you. It's the fish. It's painting Shiloh. It's ringing the bell. It's the garden. It's definitely not scoop and poop. It's giving Buddy a bath. It's the hiking. It's sitting under the trees. It's being totally relaxed. It's talking with someone who listens. It's the chance to make a difference. Everyone comes to Hope Reigns for different reasons, but no matter your reason, this is where you'll find true hope and real healing. Hope Reigns is a ranch providing refuge, rescue, and redemption through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Women's Committee will be going on April 6th at 9 a.m. Come on out and join us as we help Hope Reigns serve children going through difficult times. If interested, please see Sabrina Powell or Jude Hosler to register. Sunday, March 31st is Mega Sunday at Victoria's Praise. Join us at 8 a.m. with guest speakers, Minister Shana Willis and Minister Tamika Jeffries. Then join us for our 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. service with special guest speaker, Evangelist Joyce Rogers. I got to speak what I expect. I've got to speak into the now, the things to come. Romans 4 and 17 said, call those things that be not. family and by your friends to Mega Sunday at Victoria's Praise, Sunday, March 31st at 8 a.m., 10.30 a.m., and 6 p.m. For more information, visit victoriaspraise.org. Are you called to preach the Word of God? Well, we're looking for you to join Superintendent Will Nichols on April 6th and 13th for our Ministers and Preachers Workshop. Superintendent Nichols will be discussing the tools needed to become a successful and effective minister and preacher. To register for the workshop, visit victoriouspraise.org. Lights, camera, action. We're inviting you to the 21st Pastoral Amen. Appreciation, April 13th Hallelujah. and 14th. Join us Saturday, April 13th as we roll out the red carpet and celebrate award-winning leaders, Superintendent Will and Dr. Grace Nichols, for 21 years of ministry. This star-studded event will take place at Victoria's Praise Fellowship at 6 p.m. The celebration will continue on Sunday, April 14th at our 8 and 10.30 a.m. services. To purchase your tickets for this grand occasion, please visit victoriaspraise.org. Victoria's Praise Fellowship presents the Easter Experience. Join us on Easter Sunday for two power-packed services as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This experience will feature dance, mime, dynamic worship, and an interactive sermon from Pastor Will Nichols. Don't miss the 2019 Easter Experience on April 21st at Victoria's Praise. To learn more or to register, visit victoriaspraise.org. Amen, amen. I also like to greet those that are viewing us via the internet. We are streaming live, and we encourage you co to connect with us and learn more. Just text VPF Connect to 32. I'm sorry, 33222, amen, and you will stay connected with us, amen. At this time, we're going to hear from our awesome man of God. If we would all stand at this time, amen, and get ready to receive a great and awesome word, we have an awesome man of God, and we're going to celebrate him real good here in a couple of weeks, amen. We're certainly excited about it. But I want you to help me welcome our leader, our pastor, Superintendent Will Nichols. Let's give him a hand as he comes.
Uh, bless the name of Jesus, and uh, uh, so good to see you all out on tonight. And uh, how about our first lady? We praise God for her. Uh, we're really excited about everything. Thank you all for coming out on tonight for our final uh, growth group for this uh, uh, session. And I know we're going to have a ball on tonight as we close out. Um, I was um, particularly uh, impressed with um, our questions on tonight that we're going to be discussing now. Uh, as we get started on tonight, I just want to again kind of instruct you all on how the break's going to go. So um, more than likely, even though we won't have sessions here at the physical location, uh, I'm still going to be preaching on Sunday. Okay. I'm still going to be preaching on Sunday. We still will be giving homework every Sunday. Somebody said we're still getting our homework. Um, so uh, what we're going to do then is at either on Wednesday or some other day, we're going to do it online. So we will still gather. It'll just be online. So if you all want to form watch parties or whatever you want to do, but it just won't be any formal growth group meetings. But I will still come online and we will, I'll do a re quick review and we'll ask the questions online like we did a few weeks ago. Uh, so that's how we're going to do it. Um, and I just want you all to be aware of that. So anytime uh, we're not in session, because I'm still preaching on Sunday, we will still have uh, 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 work for you to do and time for us to come together and we'll just use the social media to connect on those occasions. So I want everybody all in, everybody engaged. When I say break, I don't merely mean break. <laughs> I don't want you to disappear for three weeks or, or in the case of uh, when we take our summer break, I want y'all to, you know, some people... They, uh, some people literally leave over the summer and say, I'll see you this fall. No, no, we're not going to do that. We're still going to have church. And um, so that's going to be important. By the way, I was looking for Sister Martha. Is she here? Oh, that is so unfortunate. I'm so sorry she got sick. <sighs> okay. Because she was the one person in our group had did 100%. She had been to every session. And I had $100 burning in my pocket to give to her tonight. Uh, and the devil just took her out. She going to miss that $100. Was there anybody else that did 100%? Not, not, not teachers. Is there any individuals that came every session, didn't miss one? If, I want everybody that did not miss one session to stand. You didn't miss one. Oh, one, two, three, four. There's not a teacher. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Everybody. Now, how did Charlene not, uh, where's my leader? Charlene was in my group. She said she didn't miss none. Lorna, you didn't, you didn't I don't remember you telling me she was. She'll have to check that. All right. All right. So I'm going to do something for everybody that did 100%. So leaders, get your people to me by this Sunday. I'm going to recognize everybody that did 100% this Sunday. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's phenomenal. I mean, I, 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 I'm the pastor, and I wasn't even here 100% of the time. <laughs> so y'all are phenomenal. Uh, uh, but I think the groups are great, and, uh, and uh, even when we're not out, everything went as planned. When our, when our leaders weren't out, our backup leaders just stepped right in. Everything went well. Give yourselves a great big hand on tonight. Great job, great job. Uh, we had uh, visitor participation coming out. Not that that was the intent or purpose, but I was very pleased with that. I want you to um, go to Matthew 18 and 21. For my review, I want to explore a passage of Scripture that wasn't in our lesson text. 
on tonight for our review. And so our review is really designed to uh, uh, expand. That's what our homework is about. Our homework is not just a regurgitation of what Pastor preached on Sunday, but it is designed to reinforce what I preached and then for you to expand your knowledge uh, in Scripture. Uh, you all probably saw the announcement how I'm going to be doing a ministers and preachers workshop seminar, which is obviously open for every preacher and every minister. It's required for ministers in training, and uh, I need to get with um, all of our ministers in training because some of you I haven't seen you sign up. Now, uh, I'm trying to put y'all up to preach, but you can't preach and not come to the training. Uh, but I was talking to my wife, and I said, baby, uh, this was for our church, but it looks like I got more people outside the church signing up for the, the, to get the training from Pastor Will than the people at the church. I was like, wow. We're blessed. I'm a teacher. But, but I, I was just surprised that we got more people outside the church signing up for the ministers and preachers workshop and seminar than are at the church. And uh, so ministers, y'all need to get on the ball. Uh, I remember one pastor <laughs> uh, was telling me about his wife and uh, he was saying how he had uh, put a, made, a, made a huge investment. She had gotten saved and did all this work. And he said, now, Lord, don't, don't let me put all this work in and somebody else come and get the fruit. <laughs> okay, y'all ain't working with me. My point is, is you all are here. You're supporting the church. Uh, and uh, uh, this workshop and seminar, you're the one supporting all of this. Allow us to do it. You can let somebody else come in and get the fruit of the knowledge of the art of preaching the gospel. So I want you all, if you haven't, please go out and register and sign up. Look at uh, Matthew 18 and 21. The message on Sunday was obeying the Holy Spirit. Somebody just say that with me. Obeying the Holy Spirit. Now, this part of being filled with the Holy Ghost is on you. A lot of times we're waiting on the Holy Spirit to do all the work. Holy Spirit don't work without your permission. And he certainly won't work without your obedience. Uh, uh, he won't work. So we talked about you got to submit to the Holy Spirit. You got to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. You got to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And number four, you must obey him. Obey him. I gave you three uh, 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 things in that teaching. You have to obey the forgiveness to overcome people. You have to obey joy to overcome self. And you have to obey love to overcome this world. The essence and the primary thing about obedience is the Bible says, whom he loved, he chasteneth. Now, check this out. The Bible says, whom he loved, he chasteneth, meaning that the ones that I love, those are the ones that I discipline. 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 And so when you see the word rod in Scripture, it's not talking about grab a stick and beat your child over the head. It's talking about providing discipline, providing discipline uh, uh, when they are young, and then when they become old, they learn to fall in line. Somebody, some of you perhaps heard the story of how they train baby elephants. They take and they put a chain on their leg and they tie it to a pole. Now the baby elephant pulls on it and it can't move, so it learns to stop pulling on that chain. Well, by the time that is a full-grown baby, full-grown elephant, a chain can't hold that grown elephant. It can break anything down it wanted to. But as soon as it feels the chain, it stops because it was taught discipline at a very young age. Y'all didn't get that. And so as soon as it says, okay, oh, I can't go beyond this, it stops. See, if that's what you have to do with your children at a very young age so that when they get older, they say, oh, I can't go beyond this because they were taught at a young age. If you're trying to discipline a 16-year-old and, and they ain't had to chain when they, oh, that ain't going to work. No, nah, you can't be like, you know, I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. Both of y'all, one of y'all be dead, one of y'all be in jail. Y'all heard what I said. If you're trying to whip a 16, 17 year old, that ain't, a, that ain't discipline. That's a fight. Okay, y'all. <laughs> That's a grown man you tried to discipline. He got a mustache and everything. You're going to stop. So that's not discipline. That's a fight. Uh, uh, now, so 
Why would that work when we get older? Because the design is, is to develop love. And so the reason why most of us learn how to operate with good sense is not because we was afraid our mama was going to knock us in the head. It was because I loved my mama, and I know that this would displease her. Are you with me? So I'm disciplining you because I love you, but you are obeying me for the same reason. Not because you're afraid of me, but because you what? Love me. And so that's the key to obedience. It's not making anybody do anything, because at a certain point, you can't make grown folks do nothing. If you are trying to make somebody do something, then you are in the area of trying to control them. And the Bible calls that witchcraft. Okay, I didn't like that. A man went to his pastor and said, I just feel like my wife's trying to control me. She do this, and she's just trying to control me. So the pastor said, well, you know, uh, trying to control a person is a form of witchcraft. You know that stupid guy went home and said, my pastor said, you're a witch. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you know that didn't work, right? <laughs> Let me get into my lesson. Matthew 18 and 23. Are you all there? So I'm going to focus on just the first point. Everybody uh, say forgiveness. So our first thing that we are taught to obey is the obedience of forgiveness. Check this out. The obedience of forgiveness to overcome people. We are struggling with people. Husbands struggle with wives. Wives struggle with husbands. We struggle with church members. We struggle with our sons and daughters. We struggle with our parents. We struggle with our co-workers. Why? Because they just won't do what we want them to do. Boy, my life would be better if Grace would just hear me. I mean, if she would just act right. Everything would be all right. There's a problem. Grace is a grown woman. Okay, y'all ain't working with me. She's not that little baby elephant with a chain on her leg. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? She's not a little baby elephant. Tell my woman, hear me. The Bible say, hear me, woman. She ain't no baby elephant. That's a grown. Somebody say grown. That's a grown woman. Can't tell her what to do. I'm her leader, but she ain't going to lead. She ain't going to follow me because I'm like, okay, you better shut up. You better, okay. <laughs> See, some of y'all, I'm, I'm talking to y'all watching. Now, listen, y'all better stay with Christianity. Don't be trying that, that Islam because they believe in beating their women in Islam. Okay. Okay, y'all ain't working with me. Look at your neighbors. I think I'm going to stay with the Christians. So she's a grown woman. So then why would she honor me? Why would she follow me? Certainly not because I'm threatening her. I mean, I know I'm physically stronger. I'm bigger. My voice is louder. I can out talk her. I can scream louder than her. Uh, but there's a thing uh, uh, called a car. She just get in the car and leave. There's a thing called a stove with a pot and hot grits on it while I'm sleeping. Okay, y'all still ain't working with me. That reference, y'all have to go and see what that reference is all about. There's a certain thing about a burning bed and all, okay, see. So you, 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 you look at your neighbor and say, you don't really want that. Don't, 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 don't be trying to dominate and control anybody. You want them to follow you because they honor you, because they love you, because you give them a reason. Now, so how do I deal with people? Because people can be vindictive, they can be bitter, they can be angry, they can be out to get you, and the answer is, everybody say forgiveness. The answer is forgiveness. We have to forgive people, otherwise we can't let it go. And so the Holy Spirit says, forgive them. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, how many times do I have to forgive this joker? Now you got to say joker. How many times do I have to forgive this knucklehead? All right, I'm so glad y'all asked. Y'all ready? 
Matthew 18, go to verse 21. Real quick, real quick. I got, <laughs> okay, a few minutes. Matthew 18 and 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? How often shall my wife act crazy and I, how often shall my husband how often shall I deal with these church how often Lord shall I put up with this he said till seven times Jesus said to him I say unto thee until seven times not he said I say not unto thee until seven times but until seven 70 times 7. 70 times 7. I believe, now I'm almost done. I believe that Peter was literally being magnanimous when he said that. Because let's be real clear. Most of us in here have not forgiven people for doing the same stuff seven times. Oh, I, I ain't studying y'all. Y'all can act like y'all save all you want. Some of y'all, you got one time to cross me. And I'm done with you. Do you know that there are people who have, who have missed a perfectly good mate who could have became a soulmate because that person crossed them one time. Sometimes I even wonder how people even get together. Because that person will cross you. I mean, you got your little minefields, and they, they don't even know nothing about your minefield, but they step on it, you done. I, I, that's it. That's it. I mean, you got all this stuff in the past I don't know nothing about. You know. And I, I'm just done. I'm finished. Uh, I'm, I, I just, you know, I don't know nothing about what, what, what Pookie did to you in, in, in 02. I had a member who joined our church. She loved the church. She had, was enamored by it. She came to, to one of our, uh, our leadership classes. No, like leadership class. She came to our new members class. Everything was going great. And then the leader of the class said to her, if you're not going to be here, please let us know because we'd like to keep in touch with you. What he didn't know is she had just got out of a cult and the way cults control you is they control your every movement they want to know where you're going who you're talking to whatever they ostracize people they excommunicate people you can't talk to this and all of that when she heard him say that one thing all she saw was cult we never saw her again you got one shot some of us are a little more magnanimous we'll give people three strikes and yeah we're watching baseball I guess Three strikes, and you out. So Peter thought he was doing a good thing when he said seven. You know, seven just sounds good. It's the number of fulfillment, number of completion. And so I guess he was using a reverse completion. <laughs> okay, six, <laughs> six and a half. <laughs> now you go be and fulfilled us getting out of fellowship. You hit that seventh time. So he thought he'd been now. And Jesus said, Seven times 77. What does, real quickly, what does seven times 77 represent, anybody? What does seven times 77 represent? Yes, darling. Go ahead and tell me. 400 and what? 490. Boy, she, she just owned it, ain't she? <laughs> so she gave me the actual number 490 times. So that, so Jesus said, no, forgive him 490 times. Actually, that number was symbolic of what? It was symbolic of boundless, endless. It was symbolic of unlimited. That literally you are to forgive people as many times as it takes. Oh, y'all ain't working with me. Let, me. let me tell you something, saints. Go to, uh, real quickly, I'm almost done here. Go to Matthew, I mean Luke 17 and 1. Luke 17 and 1, real quickly. Because I want you to understand what 
obedience is all about. This type of forgiveness comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling you to forgive them. And you're like, uh-uh. So you're not being obedient. Matt, uh, Luke 17 and 1, are you all there? The Bible says, then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will occur. Now, everybody look at me. Trying to find a nirvana, trying to find a perfect person, a perfect church, a perfect job, a perfect anything where you're not going to be offended is impossible because it is impossible that offenses will occur. That simply means it is impossible for you to find a scenario, a person, a situation, a job, a career, a husband, a wife, children, parents, brothers. It's impossible that you will ever find a situation in which you will not be offended and you will not be the offender. It's going to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, for some of us, it happened a little bit more frequently. <laughs> okay. so, don't be pointing at nobody. Some of y'all doing this. Don't be doing that. Some of us have a little bit more frequently. But it's impossible. Now look at this. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone be hanged about the neck and he cast into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. I'm not going to focus on that. I want to focus on the next part. Verse 3. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee. Now look at this. Rebuke him. And if he repent, what did it say? Forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day again to thee say, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. In other words, he's saying, okay, they, they, they step on your foot. You say, you stepped on my foot. They say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. So you rebuke them for stepping on your foot, and they say, I'm sorry. Now, I would go by to come back and step on your foot again. Uh, you stepped on my feet. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, now, now you're getting like, now you're getting a little raw. Because they step on it the third time. Okay, and then the fourth time and the fifth time. He said if they do it seven times in a day, you are to forgive them seven times. You are to forgive them. I, I ain't ta I'm talking about in a day for the same offense. Now, let me tell you the reason why we have to learn obedience to the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you why we got to learn obedience to the Holy Ghost. Because look at this. The ones that Jesus chose. Now, he had everybody he could have chose. So, I'm assuming he chose the best of the best because they got to take on the gospel when he leaves. He took on people that would ultimately die for his sake. But at this point, look at their response. Okay, y'all ain't working with me. And the apostles, now I ain't talking about the disciples. He had about 70 disciples. But so there were 70 of them. Because remember when he sent them out two by two, it was 70 of them. 70 disciples, there was followers. But then out of them, he picked, picked the best, which was 12. And out of them, he picked the best other best, which was three. And out of them, he picked one whom the Bible says whom Jesus loved. So uh, uh, he had his hierarchical structure based upon who was the best of the best of the best. Now, these were the apostles. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. You said, we, you want us to do what? How many times? How often? Yeah, Lord, you're going to have to work with us on that one right there. They, they, see, y'all only pray to Jesus. He was right there looking at them. I mean, they didn't saw him take money out the fish. They didn't saw him walking on water. They didn't saw him, and they're like, I don't know Jesus about that now. <laughs> and they with him. And so what, what, what this says is this is a challenge, and the only way to do it is you have to obey the Holy Spirit when it comes up. Now, if you read the rest of, if you go back, I'm not going to do it now because i got to finish. But if you read the rest of Matthew 18, starting at verse 23 and go down to verse uh, uh, 35, it tells us Jesus then gives them the story of this man who owed his master. Uh, um, the Bible says he owed him uh, uh, 10,000 talents. 10,000 talents was equivalent to $7,500,000. 
he said he could not pay him. His master was going to throw him in jail, and he said, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, and da 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 And so he forgave him. He, uh, uh, he, for, he, he forgave him of the debt. He forgave them of the debt. How much debt did he forgive him of, everybody? $7,500,000. This joker gets out and go find somebody. Now, y'all look at this. He found somebody that owed him $7.50, one one-hundredth of what he owed his master. He grabbed the joker by the shirt and said, where my money at? It's in the Bible. The guy said, I don't have it. He said, please forgive me. He said, no, I need my money. He didn't pay him. He had that guy threw in jail until he got his money. When the master heard what he had did to that servant, he grabbed him back and threw him back in jail. See, our responsibility in forgiveness is to recognize how much we are forgiven. We are the ones that owe the Lord $7,500,000. Whatever that person did to you, it's $7.50. Why, Pastor? Because... We offend God every day, every hour. People who offended you that you can't stand, that was like four years ago, and you ain't talked to them since. But you've been, forgive, you've been messing up with God every day, every hour since that moment. And you ain't going to forgive them for $7.50, and he's forgiven you every day $7,500,000? We must understand that this is what is required of us. God don't make us do anything, but because we should love him, we should forgive one another. So just forgive them. The pastor, they know what they're doing. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but forgive them anyway. Just forgive them. That's what the Holy Spirit requires of us. Forgive our brothers. Forgive our sisters. I just always, and, and, and First Lady and me talk about this, I just always give people the benefit of the doubt. And maybe I'm giving them too much benefit and too little doubt. Y'all ain't working with me. But that's what I do. I give them the benefit of the doubt. I say, well, maybe, maybe they got it the wrong way. Maybe they're looking at it. Well, I know they knew what they was doing. Okay, what if they did? Then what? Forgive them. But what if they didn't? Then I'm so glad that you forgave them anyway. Because then you would have been walking around holding something against somebody and they didn't even really mean it. So just get in a habit of forgiving because that's what the Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit teaches us to forgive. But pastor, they know what they're doing. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But that is not your assignment because you only see what people did. You don't know what's in their heart. Maybe they intended it. Maybe they didn't. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. Look at that heart. That's what God does. You ain't got nothing to do with that. Don't be trying to read somebody. Uh, uh, I remember somebody told me uh, um, uh, that somebody did something and, and they said, uh, uh, no, that's not what I did. That's not what I intended. The other person said, no, you're lying. You're lying. And, and, I, and here's, what, here's my point. I don't know if they was lying or not because I'm not a psychic. I do not know your heart. You could be lying. You could be telling the truth. But you know what my job is? Forgive. Forgive. Because maybe you know what you're doing, and maybe you're just like what Jesus said. Lord, forgive them for they know what? Not what they do. Because if you really knew who I was, you probably wouldn't be doing that. Why? Because go back to my first, my last scripture. Woe unto them who mess with my least ones. It would be better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and cast into the sea. So if you're intentionally trying to hurt me, whoa. But you know what? I, you know what? I really don't want you cast into the sea and drown, so I'm just going to forgive you. Y'all be like, God, get them. Get them. Get them, Lord. They don't, they don't mess with me. Get them, Lord. See, I'm so glad you're not God. Boy, you know how many people would be dead if we was God? I mean, the number of people that didn't cut me off and made me upset, Lord, I'm so glad I wasn't God. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Y'all give the Lord a great big hand. Praise.
I want to pray. Everybody's standing. I want to pray, and then we're going to receive our tithes and our offering. When we forgive, that's when you're really starting to become filled with the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the teaching on tonight, for what the saints have heard, what we've given out. Lord, even those that are streaming, I ask you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, that you will allow us to be people who forgive first. That we're slow to speak, quick to hear, and quick to forgive and find peace. Bless us to be that person, filled with the Holy Ghost, forgiving, Lord, and finding peace. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand. Praise everybody. Listen, I want you to get your tithes and your offering real quickly. Elder Brooks is going to receive the shepherd's support. Everybody sit down. Can I get everyone's attention real quickly? Uh, uh, as we get ready to go into our break now, this is going to be important. Our church is supported by tithes and what? Our church is supported by what? Tithes and offerings. So you all know that we do receive tithes and offering at our midweek. Now, what I am praying is that you all are not going to have your pastor regret taking these breaks. Because our church is supported by what? An offering. And we receive tithes and offering when? Midweek. And uh, that's a strong, support, uh, strong part of what we do. And so Elder Richard is going to, Elder Brooks, I guess, I was looking for Elder Richard. He's going to speak to that about what we do during our breaks uh, to make sure that our church is supported with our tithes and with our offerings. So if Wednesday, of course, we all, those of you that the Lord bless and you bring your tithes in, we're still going to be looking for that. And, we're, and he's going to talk to you about that. But then our offerings. Our offerings is how we support uh, our shepherd and uh, uh, how we support the Levi. So I'm going to ask you all, those of you that are tithing tonight, if you will meet me in the center aisle, I always like to speak over the tithers. The Lord has brought increase into your life, and this is the time that you tithe. I'm going to ask you to bring it at this time. Um, and as the tithers are coming, will everybody else that's going to sow an offering uh, please stand to your feet? Uh, uh, but all the tithers, I always want to speak. If you're tithing tonight, just meet me in the center aisle, and I'm going to pray over you. Everyone is standing. Everyone is standing. Everyone is standing. This is your time to tithe. Always take the time out to speak over uh, our tithers. We are so grateful to have faithful tithers, and those that the Lord has blessed with the tithe. Uh, we bring that 10% back unto the Lord, and uh, he blesses and prospers us for our tithe. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you brought increase into our life. If it had not been for you, Lord, we would have nothing. But you have given us the power to obtain wealth. We bring this portion back to you and ask you to bless it, strengthen it, increase it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Come on, bring your time. Amen. Let's give our pastor a hand. As he mentioned, we're going to be on a three-week break, and we already have a vehicle in place. Um, the text to give, if you text VPF Give to 77977 to that, and then it will respond to you, and then you are able to give online. You're tied. You can also give uh, the offering, which we are asking the Shepherd Support members to continue to be a blessing. And it's so interesting that we're 21 years old, so... That signifies that we're grown and we're mature and that we don't need us to push and prime you to do that. You are mature, so we're going to demonstrate that over the next three weeks. So how many are enjoying this format of Bible study? And one of the things that we have to demonstrate is that this is what we got to do when we take our breaks. We got to show discipline and make sure that we continue to uh, be a good steward over what God has given us and continue to be a blessing to the man of God. So those that have committed to be a blessing to the man of God, I want you to come stand at this time and join us in the center aisle. We're going to bring give that $25 gift, amen. My wife and I is giving our seed and 
You know, we're coming up on our 21st year of ministry. I've been here 20 years, of the 21 years, and uh, I have not had a time where I never regretted being a giver in this church. This, this ministry has been a tremendous blessing to me and my family. Uh, we've done a lot of things. I remember times where we would have to figure out how we're going to get gas money because we lived all the way in Burlington. But we made a sacrifice, and we always came to church every time we had service, and God always blessed us. And I think it's truly because we were givers, and we also because we were a giver to the man and woman of God. So if that's you, if you have a gift or seed that you want to sow, don't ever miss the opportunity. If you have a gift of any amount, if you don't have $25, get the closest thing you can and stand to your feet. If you don't have a gift, stand anyway. We're going to pray one prayer. We're going to be a blessing to the man of God. And on the, 20, on the uh, 14th of this month, I want everybody to participate. Amen. We're going to celebrate this man and woman of God. We're going to sow 219. Look at your neighbor and say 219. 219 is what we're asking to be a blessing to the man of God. Some of you may be able to go over and above that, but purpose it in your heart to be, uh, uh, to sow a seed into their lives. Amen. So if you have that gift, take that gift and raise it place in your right hand. Father, we thank you for those that are committed to be uh, givers in this ministry, and we thank you for their discipline, and we thank you, God, that you would just give them favor, God, as they go through their day and the, over the coming weeks. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, you bless them and multiply it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bring those gifts from all over. And to clarify that, when you text to this uh, VPF uh, to give, in the link, it will s show you where you give your tithe, your offering, or to pastoral uh, support. So there's a three categories that you will be able to give to. So when you go out there to make sure you can give and your uh, uh, funds will be allocated accordingly. Amen? Amen. Let us stand and Father, we thank you for these gifts. We pray we ask you to bless it and multiply it back into people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If we have some folks that are here for the first time, before we break into our sessions real quickly, how many of you all are impressed with our new carpet? <laughs> now, I'm sorry. I just like I just don't like nasty. So I know this is the third time we've changed that carpet, but I have to keep going. I keep telling God, I say, no, this ain't right. And uh, so we finally, I think we finally got it right. But y'all, we got to take care of our church. Okay, we can't be eating in here and chewing gum in here and all that kind of stuff. So I need you all to take care of this. She pointed at something, praise Jesus. Always telling people why I love coming to her brain. It's spearmint lizard. It's the fish. It's painting Shiloh. It's ringing the bell. It's the garden. It's definitely not scuba poop. It's giving Buddy a bath. It's the high beam. It's setting out of the tree. It's being totally relaxed. It's talking with someone who listens. It's the chance to make a difference. Everyone comes to Hope Rains for different reasons, but no matter your reason, this is where you'll find true hope and real healing. Hope Rains is a ranch providing refuge, rescue, and redemption through the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Women's Committee will be going on April 6th at 9 a.m. Come on out and join us as we help Hope Rains show children going through difficult times. If interested, please see Sabrina Powell or Jude Hosler to register. The volunteer ministry here at Victorious Praise 
Spotlights are new and exciting growth groups. The Bible tells us to walk in the Spirit, but it didn't tell us to walk alone. When you join a growth group at the PF, you're getting three things. First, a connection with other like-minded believers. Second, you're going to get an opportunity to think about and talk about the Word of God. And then finally, you get to grow spiritually so that you're ready to face life's challenges. Join a BPF growth group today. We meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Ready, set, grow! The volunteer ministry needs your help. So if you want to have Christ-centered relationships and experience growth in God's Word, then we ask that you sign up and join our growth groups. You can do so by going online to victoriouspraise.org and sign up there. We look forward to the fellowship and to serving with you. Sunday, March 31st is Mega Sunday at Victoria's Praise. Join us at 8 a.m. with guest speakers, Minister Shayna Willis and Minister Tamika Jeffries. Then join us for our 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. service with special guest speaker, Evangelist Joyce Rogers. continue on Sunday, April 14th at our 8 and 10.30 a.m. services. To purchase your tickets for this grand occasion, please visit victoriaspraise.org. Victoria's Praise Fellowship presents the Easter Experience. Join us on Easter Sunday for two power pack services as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This experience will feature dance, mime, dynamic worship, and an interactive sermon from Pastor Will Nichols. Don't miss the 2019 Easter Experience on April 21st at Victoria's Praise. To learn more or to register, visit victoriaspraise.org. Victoria's Praise Fellowship presents Worshippers United, a praise and worship symposium and night of worship with national recording artist Kalante Gavin. The day of praise and worship featuring Kim Person, Imani Tyson, Keisha White, and Clarence Rocky Rayford of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, Sanina Barber of Millennium Revival Center, Jean Hoskins of the River Church, and Marchetta Parker of Victorious Praise Fellowship. Join Victorious Praise Fellowship for Worshippers United, the annual praise and worship symposium and night of worship, Saturday, May 18th with Kalante Gavin. <laughs> For more information, call 919-957-7500 or visit victoriouspraise.org. 